I'm fortunate to have a few small tubes of Winsor & Newton's professional watercolors, and Winsor Violet is one of them. The previous video showed the pouring and the swatching. This time it's a mixing chart. But I wanted to do things differently. So I did a preliminary exercise and selected a dozen of my favorite mixing combos to feature in this session. Although I tested Windsor Violet with a couple of Daniel Smith's Primatech colors, I chose to focus on the paints from my regular multi-brand palette. So M. Graham, Daniel Smith, Holbein, another Windsor & Newton, and even a Senelier are at play here. Inkworks videos don't usually start out, so let's get to work. But color mixing is serious business. At least, that's how it's getting treated for this intro. As you can probably tell from how everything's laid out and lined up on the paper. That's right, I used a ruler. Two, even. If the writing at the top is hard to make out, the colors are Azo Yellow, New Gamboge, Azo Orange, Permanent Alizarin Crimson, Quinacridone Rose, Cerulean Blue, Thalo Blue Green Shade, Windsor Green, Senelier Green, Permanent Green Number 1, Sepia, and Payne's Gray. Rather than representing with a single square swatch, this format is better at showing the mixing possibilities between two colors. For example, look at the first column on the left with Azo Yellow. It begins at the bottom with pure Windsor Violet and ends at the top with pure Azo Yellow, allowing for four variations in between. Of course, if you want to try this yourself, you could have any number of mixes you'd like. I chose four for simplicity. Okay, actually, I really wanted five, but I messed up early on and just went with it. I like orange and purple as standalones, but I hadn't given much thought toward mixing the two together. So the Windsor Violet slash Azo Orange combo was a pleasant discovery. Remember, this chart features only the 12 colors I thought made the most appealing mixes with Windsor Violet. So, in my opinion, there are a lot of delights here.
To minimize the chances for mistakes, I made things easier on myself by moving the pans of all the colors I'd chosen to that tray there. That way, I didn't have to search for, say, cerulean blue, only to load up on cobalt blue hue instead. That reminds me. I'd once mentioned thinking of replacing cerulean blue, and a smart viewer commented reminding me of what that color brings to the table. Or, in this case, the palette. So, thank you, Natasha, for looking out for me. That Princeton Snap number no. 6 round brush gets a lot of use around here. Maybe it has to do with the scale I work at, but also, and I've heard this from other watercolor YouTubers, it's an all-around useful size to have. I really like the Neptune brushes, but I don't have this size in that line. And that's okay, because I do like the snaps, too. In case you're wondering, the brush at the top is a Princeton Real Value half inch flat. It's what I used to transfer the Windsor Violet to the porcelain mixing palette. And that dirty thing on the right edge of frame is just a towel that I set my water jars on. I also wipe my brushes on it. Beyond that is usually a beverage of some sort coffee, tea, or soda. I was pretty focused on this chart though. The raw footage was only about 35, maybe 40 minutes, so it didn't take long. Of course, that doesn't take into account the prep of planning the layout or the initial mixing of all 28 colors in my watercolor palette but I've already mentioned that, and now it sounds like I'm whining. Oh, 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 oh,
I was inspired by other YouTubers who've done similar charts, but mine is greatly simplified compared to some hardcoreists. And honestly, I totally enjoyed it. If you haven't tried this sort of varying proportion mixing chart, I recommend it solely on the fun factor. But I find it's also useful as a visual guide for my colors. Not entirely sure if I'd intended this design to represent anything in particular. Uh, wheat, maybe? Yeah, I'm going with wheat. I'm happy to share this little experiment. Hopefully it inspires you to play around with your mixes. And if not, perhaps it was at least playing in the background as inoffensive white noise. Hey, I'll take it. Until next time, stay artsy, my friends. <laughs>